मेरा ही एक जनरेशन का मूवमेंट मैं समझता हूँ इसको ऑल दो इट्स कॉल्ड एज ए फेल्ड मूवमेंट क्योंकि इसका जो लीडर था के पी कृष्ण कुमार नाइनटीन एटी नाइन में वो सुइसाइड कर दिया था ऑल ऑफ ए सडन इट गॉट द मूवमेंट गॉट स्टॉप्ड बिकॉज ही कमिटेड सुइसाइड एंड अदर्स डिड नो वॉट टू डू आफ्टर हिज पासिंग अवे एंड बिखर गया था सब लोग इधर उधर चला गया था For me, it was very important, and it was considered to be a failed movement. So I was interested in that failed movement as an art historian. I was interested to know as to why it has failed, right? So actually, one art historian, R. N. Mishra, Professor R. N. Mishra, uh, my essay or my first essay on radical collective begins from saying. Uh, this is a failed movement or this is called as a failed movement so he was very curious to know why i am interested in a failed movement usually everybody writes about successful movement right so i said the so called moves failed movement or as we go ahead we will find out how why it is everybody called it a failed movement right uh, uh, so i am the person who has since then been very consistent about documenting their works traveling here and there finding out their works i cannot claim that i have done uh, enough or adequately to write a very comprehensive thing about all the artists there but mai mera interest consistent raha isme since about late 80s after the passing of krishna kumar Uh, मैंने तो ठान लिया था कि मैं इसके बारे में लिखूंगा इसके बारे में स्टडी करूंगा इसके बारे में पब्लिश करूंगा इसका याद मैं जीवित रखेगा इसलिए अभी तक इसका ये चल रहा है आप कृष्ण कुमार के मरने के बाद 10 साल तक कोई कोई भी पूछ पूछा नहीं उसके बाद 10 डेथ एनिवर्सरी में एक मीटिंग रखा था उस टाइम में मुझे बुलाया था ऑल दो आई वॉज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द आई वॉज पार्ट नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द ग्रुप मुझे बुलाया गया था क्योंकि मेरे पास काफ़ी सारे स्लाइड्स थे कृष्ण कुमार के तो मेरे स्लाइड शो से ही वो टेंथ डेथ एनिवर्सरी का मेमोरियल किया था फिर उसके बाद अभी धीरे 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 करके थोड़ा बहुत इंटरेस्ट हो रहा है इधर उधर कोई यू नो जे में एक दो बार कुछ डिस्कशन हुए थे आ, उसके अलावा ज़्यादातर इसमें इंटरेस्ट नहीं है बट मुझे दो तीन बार केरला में कहीं न कहीं इनविटेशन मिला है इसको प्रेजेंट करने के लिए और डिस्कस करने के लिए और बाद में मैं इसका ये आर्टिकल मैंने जब लिखा था 92 में वो आर्टिकल फिर बाद में मैं उसको रिवाइज किया और कई कई जगह पर उसको पब्लिश भी किया है तो इफ एनी बडी इज इंटरेस्टेड इन रीडिंग इट यू कैन ऑल्सो कॉन्टैक्ट मी आई कैन सेंड यू पी डी एफ फॉर समथिंग लाइक दैट राइट और लाइक दिस इज माई इंट्रोडक्शन टू माई प्रजेंटेशन सो आई पर्टिकुलर दैट यू शुड नो कि मैं इसमें कैसे इंटरेस्ट लिया कब से लिया और कैसे इसको आगे ले चले Now this is uh, largely about Baroda and largely about also Kerala art scene. So sitting here in UP, you may not really know much about Kerala art scene, right? I mean, automatically naturally you 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 may not uh, because of the recent Biennale etc. There is some discussion about Kerala as a uh, hub of uh, art activity, right? But otherwise, still people may not be knowing the. history of uh, development there right so uh, kerala ha has actually one of the most important pioneering uh, modern indian artists namely raja ravi verma raja ravi verma hailed from travancore or kerala or trivandrum to today's trivandrum and uh, he was he became a national artist by 1900 or so 1905 usko pehle hi 
So he was very prominent as far as Kerala art scene is concerned. And you know he was an academic realist and, and painting in Hindu mythology, right? So he was accepted uh, as a standard painter. Everybody followed him until actually Madras school uh, under KCS Panikkar. A lot of Malayali uh, young uh, artists went and studied in Madras. Kerala did not have an uh, art college, so to say. It had only an art school uh, 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 even in the mid-century, 20th century. Uh, so many people actually, many uh, Keralaites went to Madras to study. Some of them, Kesi Spanikar and Madras art movement, uh, thus got extended to Kerala because of a lot of students going from Kerala to study. Some such people are M.V. Devan. He is very locally known uh, modernist. And uh, another very important sculptor who has come out from Kerala is Kanai Kunjiraman. And in the 60s, they all organized together and uh, got together and made one Kerala Kalapitam. Uh, this was actually at the, under the initiative of M.B. Devan and other cultural activists in Kerala. It was an extension of Madras school. They were doing batik and they were doing kind of abstraction and kind of Indianness was the uh, kind of uh, recognized uh, style there. Uh, but Kerala definitely was more dominated by literature and cinema. The literary people, literature was very rampant, very, very popular in Kerala. Uh, writers, novelists, poets, etc. were much favored in Kerala. And you have the periodicals such as uh, Madhru Bhumi and uh, we weeklies, you know, in which short stories and novels are uh, uh, serialized. And there, uh, the Madras school trained uh, Nambudri, or came Vasudevan Nambudri, his name. He is no more. He passed away recently. And this A.S. Nair, he is just simply called as A.S. And they were actually doing illustrations. So modernism enters, modern sensibility enters into Kerala uh, public through illustrations. This is very interesting. Unlike other places, because they were doing figurative work, but highly expressionistic kind of. Uh, uh, some uh, AS was also stylizing it so much to make it Indianness kind of Indianness uh, aspect was coming in the, uh, there. All kinds of novels, all kinds of short stories, poems were all like. So there is a new book that has been published by uh, Kavita Balarishan, who is a young professor at uh, Trichur Art College. She was my student in, in Baroda. She has brought out a whole book in Malayalam about the literary um, narrative, literary uh, illustrations in Kerala. Uh, if she is coming to Banaras, please organize one presentation by her. It will be worth seeing uh, the, what she has to say. Because that book is in, in Malayalam, you won't be able to access it. I have been telling her to publish it in English. So uh, magazine illustrations were very, very much uh, understood and uh, taken as the standard modern you know, uh, thing. And the younger generation of mid-70s. Uh, you should also remember that 70s is a very crucial time in Indian politics. This is the time Mrs. Sindra Gandhi had declared uh, emergency. And there was a lot of fallout. Kerala was also infested with Naxal movement from the mid-60s. So Kerala also had very radical kind of politics there, very extremist politics. Uh, was very dominant. Even now, people are largely left-oriented. You know the government there is leftist and all that. And that's the only state where BJP has not made an inning also. Not even one seat has been made by BJP. No. So in the 60s, in the, particularly in the 70s, mid-70s, with the con in the context of uh, uh, this uh, um, uh, emergency, a lot of uh, secret work was being done. Little magazines were being published. People were, you know, literally attacking police stations and rich people. You know, the Mavo uh, 
Mao Setsung, Majumdar group, you know. So this was actually percolated into the cultural practices in Kerala. So mid 70s in Kerala had been radical filmmaking, theater, and uh, poetry writing. Very strong uh, wave was felt in Kerala at that time. So this younger generation artists who were uh, very much influenced by radical political ideology and po highly po uh, agitated uh, uh, political climate in the post-emergency times here. Yeah. Now it is in this time that 1975 that the Trivandrum Art College, it was a college of fine arts, uh, till then was upgraded by the government. In 1975, new batch of students were enrolled for degree. So most of the radical group, painters and sculptors association members are of that batch, that group, right? So it began as a diploma course, national diploma, but then it got upgraded soon after that. And most of them passed out in 1980 in from the first batch. But during their time uh, of students' time in, in Trivandrum, they were all highly agitated. The students in the first batch of Trivandrum College of Art got into strike in 1977 that demanded, their demands were actually adequate educational facilities and necessary infrastructure, hardly anything was there. Government started the uh, college, but it was only old teachers and uh, old uh, equipments, etc., etc. Teachers, studio facilities, etc. So they were demanding that the seeds of the later uh, radical group can be traced back to the students' agitation there. Most of this, a lot of them were quoted arrest and put in jail and all that, you know, kind of very, very troublesome time they were all living. Now, they themselves write about it in a 1989 catalog that was published uh, in, in, in a context of an exhibition. It was, the exhibition was called as Pratiloma Drishya Bodhati Nidire. That is in Malayalam. It, it means against retrograde visual consciousness, right? Or retrograde culture, visual culture. So in this, uh, they have written, I'm, it's a long quote, I'm reading it. In a situation where the protest strikes and police, police interventions had become regular feature, alternative possibilities of learning art was sought. The lack of guidance and the disruption of regular teaching had left us in such such of uh, possibilities through reading, looking, thinking, and interacting with each other. The discovery of great figures of world art who have meaningfully responded to their respective socio-political situations like Goya, Picasso, the Mexican murals, Dumia, Hogarth, gave scope for us to expand our visual sensibilities. It is on the basis of this exposure to world art that our attitude against decadence in art and resistance to it began to evolved. So they themselves defining it, that because there was no adequate teaching, uh, art history, etc. was not taught. So they had to rely largely on library and then interact, mutual interaction between all of them. You will see also in their earlier works, like a lot of, uh, um, uh, of them have been doing uh, uh, portrait of each other. There is no studio possibility of doing portraiture or portrait of the model. There is no model in the studio. So they, each one of them will sit for uh, getting more uh, to, to be to, to other students to model them. So this is um, by Alex, one of them is by Alex Matthew, that one. Early work as a student, BA student of this uh, sculptor Ashokan Bhaduwal and this uh, on uh, my side is Krishna Kumar's uh, portrait of Jeevan Thomas, another student of there. I'm going to sh show you a series of them. This is K.P. Krishna Kumar's early work as a student uh, of Surendra Nair who became actually a very important artist who lives in Baroda uh, now. 
so this is Surendran's uh, uh, portrait. A uh, series of, uh, interestingly, Krishna Kumar gathers his artistic strategy through the conventional genre of portrait sculpture. There are some examples of, uh, here that you can see, but I will, of course, of course, name them as we go ahead. As a student in Trivandrum College of Fine Arts, doing mutual portraits became a practice among students. I myself had documented this in 1992 in the, in the campus. Uh, Trivandrum College campus, I documented myself. These photographs are taken by me. Now, we do not know where these sculptures have disappeared. I don't know the whereabouts of them today. So, usual, unusual uh, thing about the, these portraits is that they are not academic in that very strict sense. There is an intimacy of feeling in them. There is a facial likeness everybody tries to get. There are uh, carefully articulated expressionist distortions are seen in this. So expressionism was actually the kind of uh, art language that was much favored by all these artists, German expressionism particularly, because they thought, considered that German expressionism was a reaction to human situation. And so, uh, uh, so you can see that these um, sculptures are dis displaying tremendous skill and uh, you know uh, capacity to express. Uh, as you can see here, this is K.P. Krishnan Kumar, another student, uh, namely Raghunandan. Uh, this is another. This is the same work. This is K.P. Krishnan Kumar uh, doing Alex Matthews portrait. There is a likeness, very, cl very close likeness to Alex uh, here. All these are actually made in cement concrete. Now, characteristic uh, distortions actually you get to see in this. This is Krishna Kumar, uh, another student called uh, Ramachandran. Mm, just look at the kind of way distortions are done, right? He will actually kind of follow this up uh, in his uh, forthcoming work. This is Draghunandan uh, uh, doing sculpture of Vijayan, another student. Uh, this is a regular, uh, once in a way they used to get this, uh, you know, person to sit uh, for modeling. So this is that person's po portrait by Draghunandan. Uh, this is Karuna Karan, another very important artist of Alex Matthew. Alex Matthew was a very impressive person. His, um, his face was uh, somewhat... Uh, elongated and his face was very much impressive. Uh, this is a teacher, I think, Datta, um, who was a, uh, so this is Jeevan Thomas, another very, very, very special kind of stylization he was. Uh, he became actually a very uh, established portrait maker in Kerala, Mr. Jeevan Thomas. Now, Krishna Kumar actually continues his um, uh, 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 portrait making. I'm talking about this, uh, uh, there's a poet, uh, Vaila Ramavarma. This is after he passing out. He and uh, Alex Matthew went and stayed in that village and uh, of the poet's village and did a series of works there. One of them is a cement concrete uh, portrait of the Vaila Ramavarma. Especially noteworthy is the intense expression uh, enabled by characteristic deep curvy incisions and stylizations of the contours of the portrait, right? I mean, it actually comes from a student day's work. This, this one is actually a student day's work, but you can see the forehead of uh, 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 Vaila Ramarma, how it has been completely kind of, uh, you know, done in, uh, with that kind of, uh, uh, which Krishna Kumar experimented further in portraits of revolutionary poet, uh, poet Vaila Ramavarma. He extended it. He is the only one who went to Shantiniketan after Trivandrum. So genre of portraiture he specialized in. He did uh, uh, an expressionistic. So uh, uh, so he actually any problem? No. Uh, okay, so uh, he was doing expressionism for sure. He 
he was doing poor, uh, expressionism, but uh, he was not very uh, comfortable with that kind of one language that he was using. He was probably thinking that he's kind of romanticizing the sitter. So in Chantani, I think he developed this habit of painting them uh, with very hard colors like this. In, this seems to be a portrait of uh, Ramkinga Beige. This is what he had told me at that time. Ramkinga was no more at that, or, or probably. 83 was alive. 83, Ramkinga was alive, right? No, no, he died. He eh? died in 19. So it's from, uh, it's, it's, it's from, uh, yeah, he, he told me, yeah, he. Huh? Right, it's an imagination. Anyway, he puts this very hard edged uh, colors on the portrait so as to kind of contradict with the realistic, rather expressionistic uh, portraiture. So this is he himself, huh? Hmm? Very good portrait of something. Oh, yes. yes. This is he himself holding a kind of portrait uh, mask. Mm. Mm. And he continued, this is also Shantini Eden work, early 80s work by Krishna Kumar. Uh, <clears throat> now he continued uh, doing portraiture. This uh, Kate was uh, his girlfriend uh, that he did in Shantini Eden. We do not know where it has disappeared. I have not been able to trace this. Uh, but the, on, the, on your <coughs> right hand side is actually he is sculpting Rekha Rodvitya in Baroda. This is about 1983-84. I myself had taken this picture mm -hmm. in a studio. Uh, Post-graduation from Shantiniyathan and then came to Baroda. Shantiniyathan and then he came to Baroda by about 83-84. Ah, no? mm. He was a very dynamic guy. The kind of portraiture of friends and companions uh, which started in Trivandrum as a student continued uh, throughout in his short career. Uh, so that is a very important aspect. But he actually extended his portraiture. In Shantaniyadan he did, uh, so uh, 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 what I call as expressionistic revivals of portraiture to the convention of portrait sculpture. He did portraits of iconic historic personas of Vyalar, this poet here, and uh, Ramkinga Bej, Ram, uh, Ra Rabindra Tagore, and Vasco da Gama, for various reasons, of course, at various times, uh, representing three approaches of Krishna Kumar's interest in portrait. Uh, see, I mean, Vaila Ramavarma's portrait he did because of the empathy and identification as a leftist. You know, they, so in, in, with a certain uh, uh, identification with leftism, he did this portrait of the poet. But portrait of Trago brings about a peculiar uh, gesturing towards withering of glory of cultural patriarch. There is a criticism, there is a kind of mockery of uh, Rabindna Tagore in this uh, portrait. As you can see closely, I don't have closer pictures of this, but it has a very peculiar stoop. It's a very old stage of uh, 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 Rabindna Tagore. And uh, 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 in a way, he kind of portrays him as a kind of a colonizer. This one, this one is another. This is actually commissioned work. There is some, some place called Amar Kuti. Amar Kuti. This is a cooperative in Chandrigetan. Uh, it is called Society for Rural Development, Cooperative Society of Craftsmen at Chandaniya. They have a kind of established institution there. I've been there. So, <clears throat> Tagore's uh, stooping shoulders and bending back and not so graceful. Uh, it's almost funny hair he has, like, you know, like that. Otherwise, such a handsome fellow in the portraits, uh, or he's presented as a very impressive guy, right? In uh, most of the portraits that he's... Uh, uh, so Krishna Kumar takes a, a, a deviation from that 
uh, and he paints it in a kind of a funny way. Although it was a commissioned work from the local, you know, enthusiasts for Tagore, he somehow kind of make it, made it a kind of somewhat uh, critical of uh, Tagore's. The sculpture at Amar Kutir uh, responds to the established handsome persona of uh, Tagore with uh, Krishna Kumar's specialization. Uh, sorry, Krishna Kumar's visualization became tragically and comically old man, an old man, uh, where uh, 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 a kind of uh, making fun of, making mocking at Tagore's persona. So, <clears throat> so he he smuggles in a kind of a uh, mockery in the persona. Uh, <clears throat> And probably is also self-respective, self-reflexive in the sense that he's looking at his own young uh, perso pers personality and dynamic personality in contrast to uh, Tagore. So he, he considered, like me, some best, some leftists consider. This is by Krishna Kumar. Uh, so this is this shows a little clearer what I was trying to say that uh, kind of funny hair and the stooping head and the kind of... So, uh, what I was trying to say is that within the kind of Indian context of Tagore, as you know, comes from a very uh, rich feudal background, taking over this rural, you know, scene there, you know, sidelining the local santals and kind of pe people who really actually own, own that land, so it's a kind of a colonizing in a kind of a different way. You get my point? So uh, he is actually portraying the tragedy. He's concerned about the tragedy of the colonizer and the cultural uh, patriarch, you know, in this case, which extends itself to another sculpture he did in 1985, called, uh, mm, it's not exactly a portrait, but it's a, it's a representation of Vasco de Gama, the first colonizer, you know, who landed in 15, uh, whatever, in uh, Calicut, right? Uh, the image of Vasco de Gama, strictly speaking, is not a conventional portrait, but the thematic is very significant. So he is portrayed as somebody which, uh, with, uh, who has not gained anything. You know, after the hazardous uh, travel with these parts of, uh, there's a boat that is shown. It's actually multimedia. It's plaster of Paris uh, plus a, a, a cloth, uh, you know, painted with uh, uh, colors. And also he uses uh, raisin for, to make it stiff. And um, uh, there's a shattered boat lying in his, uh, on his side. And what he is holding in his hand is actually a broken shell. Uh, that is the, that's all what he gains. The voyagers uh, uh, gaze at the broken conch shell in his palm. Ironically, the ultimate achievement of this colonizer is at the end of the hazardous journey is this broken conch. So there's a kind of irony that he's uh, kind of bringing in. So that irony is also part of Tagore's uh, persona also. So, so he is exhausted, weak, and distorted, and bent the yellow-colored Vasco de Gama with expressive marks of blue, green, and red, marks of bruises, you know, his body is representation of the existential tragedy of the heroic colonizer. So he also sees colonizer not just simply as a, somebody who takes over, but he himself is kind of implied in a, in a kind of a uh, tragedy. Now, all this actually is in the context also. We slightly change the thematic in the discussion now. We are looking at an early work by Kanai Kunjaraman. I mentioned about him. He's a student passed out from uh, uh, Madras College of Art in the uh, early 60s or uh, a little. Uh, he was also a member of uh, Choramandal Artist Village. He goes to London. He was one who got a scholarship 
to study abroad. He was going, huh? Ah, also there. He studied uh, with uh, Rug Butler, a very famous sculptor in, of Rug Butler. And then he did, 